Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the feast of St. Madeline Sophie Barat. We are completing a year we're never going to forget. We've done this together as brothers and sisters in the Sacred Heart family. A Sacred Heart family that St. Madeline Sophie started 220 years ago at age 21. Her dedication to caring for and educating children in the heart of Jesus has impacted millions of lives and will continue to do so well into our future. She's our foundress and she is our inspiration. As we begin our liturgy today, let us reflect on a few of St. Madeline Sophie's quotes that I picked up. Be humble, be simple, bring joy to others. Your example, even more than your words, will be an eloquent lesson to the world. I like this next one. Even though you have fallen a thousand times in one day, if in the evening you stand up again on your feet, you may sing a victory. And finally, above all, get in the habit of thinking about God. Now let us stand and welcome our friend and our celebrant on seniors' ends and join in singing, See She Stands. Sophie, 
We thank you for her courage and vision, her commitment and love. We rejoice that we can share in the heritage that has been presented to us and pray that we will build on the witness and example of all the religious of the Sacred Heart. We pray through Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated in God's word. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all the wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. Dear friends, 
Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his, his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Each of us in our own way in the course of a year 
have learned a lot and changed a lot. Many of you are runners, and you know that quite often in the race, you start and end in the same spot. So much of life is a circle. We have cycles in the way that our body operates. We have the seasons. There are so many things that begin and end in the same place. But hopefully in the course of things, we change, we grow, we stretch, we learn, we discover. St. Madeline was an amazing person when you think about the circumstances of her birth, her early years, her maturing, and then even into her full adulthood. She lived 86 years, and in a certain sense, her life almost companions the story of the United States. She was born just about the time of our Declaration of Independence, and she died as the Civil War was coming to an end, four score and six years. And so, Madeline Sophie was a woman that was born into a time of great upheaval, the French Revolution and everything that was collapsing around her, and the, the church being literally under fire and almost trying to be destroyed by some of the French governments that followed the monarchy. And there was much confusion everywhere. And for her to have the courage to start a religious community in, in the face of everything collapsing and churches being locked and closed and people not being able to practice their faith, was an extraordinary act of vision and confidence in God. And how did she do it? She had a circle, a circle of friends. She understood she could not do it alone. She had the blessing of her brother Lewis, as many of you have read over the years, and he helped her understand. And she had the gift of, through him, of getting to know a lot of clergy, especially Jesuits, and she got to appreciate the, the many gifts that all people had to offer, and the great need there was in society. The more affluent people had many spiritual needs and needed God perhaps more than anyone. And then the very poor and the people that were suffering because of the revolution and had lost their jobs and their way of life. And she understood that she wanted God's word to be able to reach all classes of society. And so she quickly formed a circle that represented many different backgrounds. And as you probably know from reading some of her letters or hearing about her over the years, there was not always agreement among her circle of friends. But they could agree to disagree, and they could love each other even with their disagreement. There are many beautiful lessons that St. Madeline Sophie teaches us just by the way that she handled stress. She and Philippine didn't always get along, for instance. Both of them are saints. And that's part of the story, isn't it? They both had the same intense love for the Lord and same zeal to bring the faith to different parts of the world, but they looked at it from different viewpoints. And St. Philippine was able to teach St. Madeline Sophie things, and Madeline was ready and willing to learn from St. Philippine, and vice versa. And so it is important for us to think about a circle of love that we experience. Whether we recognize it or not, we're all part of a circle. And the Academy of the Sacred Heart offers you the opportunity to become a circle of sharing, giving and receiving, listening to each other, supporting each other, and in a way that larger schools cannot do. And there's an intimacy of the sharing, and there's, there's a sense of being valued, recognized, and important, and that you have a very clear sense 
of the gifts that you want to offer and the gifts you need to receive. And that was part of the wisdom of St. Matthew and Sophie, wanting the schools that they would establish to have nearby or as part of the school a convent. And the, the convent was a place where the circle of religious lived and gave a spiritual foundation to everything that happened in the classroom or beyond the classroom, the curriculum of life, if you would. And St. Madeline is, is with us in a very powerful way through the different people who have learned and studied her spirituality, even though we don't have religious of the Sacred Heart explicitly here, they are still part of our thinking, and they're still very much part of our meetings, and the board, and uh, so many of the things that happen here. And we continue to study her writings, and think about her witness and example, and that of Rose Philippine, and to try to appreciate so much of the heritage that we have received. And one of the ways that we can do that is by continuing to think about this image of being a circle of sharing, sharing our joys and our sorrows, how we met God, how we've lost God, how we're searching and struggling to find God, how God showed up when I didn't expect, how God was ready to forgive. The gospel that's assigned for this feast of St. Madeline is the gospel of the vine and the branches. And ultimately, that image is really about being connected. And that's what the circle's about, too. And we tend to think of vines going upward from the ground, and they do. They defy gravity, if you would, because they, they climb up. But they also circle back. If you've ever really looked at a vine and looked at branches, they keep curlicuing around, and they wind around a fence or a trellis, and they circle, and that's how they have the support to hold huge clusters of, of grapes, for instance, that would otherwise weigh them down. And we do the same spiritually. We support each other through our witness, our prayer, our generosity, our patience, our forgiveness, these are all wonderful ways that we form and sustain a circle of life and love and joy. And so, in a special way, I'm speaking to those that are going to be leaving the community here at the end of the school year. Think about the circle and try to retain that friendship and the love and to stay bonded to each other. And that's what St. Madeline Sophie tried to do. She was famous for her correspondence. Well, we don't have to work as hard as she did. You can just do emails every day, or Facebook, or whatever. But wonderful ways to just remind each other, I'm here, I'm ready to listen, I, I love you, God loves you. Thanks for what we shared at ASH. Thank you for all the ways that you helped make me who I am. And for all of us in all the other years, as we join in this liturgy today, it's good for us also to thank God for the circle and to promise that we want to be a deeper part of the circle. Because if you think about circles, there's circles within circles within circles, and it's a we go deeper and deeper, almost uh, like a uh, slinky or something that we can lift. And what God wants of us is that the circle widens, but the circle also deepens. And we go deeper and deeper into the mystery of God every single day. A circle of life and love. We are a part of that circle of God's love. Grateful for the gift of our faith, the witness of St. Madeline and Sophie, and all the religious of the Sacred Heart, let us pray.
church leaders. May God inspire them to work for peace in our world so that people may trust in one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For religious of the Sacred Heart, may they continue to follow the extraordinary example of St. Madeline Sophie Vera. We pray in thanksgiving for Sister Beers and Sister Epic and for the gifts they shared with, shared with us while they were here. May God guide them and watch over them always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For our Sacred Heart faculty, staff, and school leaders, may the Spirit of Jesus inspire them to embrace and model the goals of a Sacred Heart education as they help to shape our lives every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the children of the Sacred Heart, may we follow in the footsteps of St. Madeline Sophie and grow in the love of all the heart of Jesus. For the seniors and the eighth grade boys and all those who love, uh, whose life journey leads them elsewhere next year, may they be assured that the Sacred Heart will always be in their home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our Sacred Heart alums and their families, may they carry the message of St. Madeline Sophie there beyond the frontier of our school. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people around the world who suffer from violence, from hunger, from sickness, from fear, may we share the love of Jesus with them and help them to know that they are not alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us remember all those who have died, especially members of our extended school community. We pray that they may find eternal happiness in the sacred heart of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God the Father, you are there. Hear us, God the Son. Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Mercy on your people.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call us back to our original holiness, and bring us to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, upon to all please. May holy therefore these gifts be prayed by sending down your spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks for a gift, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be God unto one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world, bring her in the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Archbishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, St. Matthew and Sophie, St. Rose, for the people, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, my Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, All of the Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Praise to grant us peace in our day. But by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait for those of hope and coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom. Amen. And the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, peace I leave you, and peace I give you. Not in your sin, but in the faith of your church, and graciously granted peace in you, in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
Lord, I am not born of it. It should enter under my word. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
some, something new, stay active, pray often, and take time to enjoy sunny days and starry nights. In the words of St. Mel and Sophie Barrett, be humble, be simple, and bring joy to others. The Upper School wishes you and your loved ones a safe and enjoyable summer. We know that you have all worked so hard this school year, and it is almost time to relax and spend time under the sun. May this summer bring you opportunities to grow, and most importantly, do not forget to live in the moment. Today, we gratefully recognize those of our faculty and staff who have surpassed an important milestone dedicated to the mission of, the educa of education in this network of Sacred Heart Schools. Please join me in congratulating this year's award recipients and we'll clap after each one. As I say your name, please proceed forward to accept your award. Celebrating five years, Emily Avent. Christopher Bagman. <laughs> Celebrating five years, Lawrence Kearney. <laughs> Celebrating five years, Petra Morris. <laughs> Celebrating five years, Maureen Newcomb. Celebrating five years, Tabitha Russell. And our last person celebrating five years, Susan Spangler. celebrating 10 years, and that's Agostino Visaki. <laughs> celebrating 15 years, Melissa Grace. <laughs> also celebrating 15 years, Michael Crowe. celebrating 20 years for Sacred Heart, and that's Peter Kelly. <laughs> Mr. Crow, did I see you back there? You missed your round of applause. If you want to come up and get your award, Mr. Crow. <laughs>
and celebrating 25 years, we have two people. Catherine Dawson. In addition to Kathy Dawson's 25 years of service, she is an alum of the Sacred Heart and comes from a legacy of family, uh, family alums as well. Her mother and aunt, sisters and nieces have all also attended Academy of the Sacred Heart. She's been an active member of the Alumni Association, serving as a member of the Alumni Advisory Board and also as the Board President. Even as we celebrate her, she is serving as a representative from the Alumni Association today. Thank you, Kathy, and I turn it over to you for your honorary alum presentation. And my grandmother. I went to Sacred Heart on Jefferson Avenue, so I come by this school very honestly and gratefully. So it is a pleasure today to be able to um, honor and welcome the staff and faculty to the Alumni and Alumni Association of the Sacred Heart. Honorary alumni and alumni are those who, without any affiliation to another Sacred Heart school, have shown by their 12 years of service here in our school unselfish service to the students and to the religious of the Academy of the Sacred Heart, deep commitment to the goals and criteria for Sacred Heart schools. They get it and a true dedication to this house built on confidence. We have three people we're honoring, and we'll honor first this year's recipient for 2021 is Andrew Barron. Gretchen Parks, and Katrina Hamilton. Congratulations to everyone. Now let us stand and conclude our year. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the body and blood of your Son that some of us were able to share here in the chapel and that others of you experience in a more sacramental and mysterious way. We pray that each of us who have shared in this liturgy will be renewed in our desire to be faithful to the heritage we have received and to witness the example of St. Madeline and Sophie, and above all, to witness the example of your own son who gave his life that we might live. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now, may we God bless you in the weeks and months ahead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended, and you go in peace and enjoy the summer.